Hello everybody and welcome today. Um, so we are here for a, a Barlow's Five. <laughs> um, I go over sometimes. So I told Barlow that it would be really good uh, for a uh, Barlow's Five is stocking stuffers. Um, so these are great games um, that you can get a gamer in your life uh, to fill their stocking. Um, and toss it on. So they're they're smaller size. They're quick play games. They're reasonably priced. They, they won't break the bank. They pack small and they play big. And they play big. There yeah. you go. And this is a season of giving. So I'm giving you way more than five. Yeah, because I said five. And because <laughs> it's the season of giving, we're giving you. We haven't got a count yet, but we'll yeah. get one at the end. I, guess. I, I don't know how many there are here, but these are my favorites. But these <laughs> are fa yes. That. So these are all great yeah. for yes. uh, stocking stuffers. Um, awesome. Awesome to, to give out, um, yep. you know, to the gamer in your life, right? Yep, yeah. absolutely. Okay, um, so we're going to do a quick rundown yep. um, on these games. I'm going to let Barlow talk about some of them. And uh, then, I'm um, going to introduce some new ones first, and then there are some that we've talked about in other videos that we'll just reference in a little bit. But let's start by just going through some of these, and I'll tell you what I know about them and what I like about them. Uh, let's start with the Tiny Epic Games. So okay. I've got four of them here. There are way more than four Tiny Epic Games. The cool thing about these is that they they really are um, epic scale, right? So they look like these are in small boxes, but they play like some of the bigger games. So even though these may be, um, you know, smaller type games, they actually, some of them can take, you know, 30 to 60 minutes or longer. They have components that spread out on the table. So it, it really is, if you want a bigger game, a more, um, you know, a deeper playing game with several different elements, then these Tiny Epic Games are a perfect example of that. These are my favorites, and they do all kinds of different things. The one that you're holding right there my is favorite. my favorite. It's my favorite, too. Um, it's called Tiny Epic Tactics, and you have little meeples that move around in squares in a 3D miniature environment. So it's like playing a miniature battle game in this box on 3D terrain where there are boxes inside that hold components, they flip over and they become the terrain. Your 3D terrain, terrain. yeah. So yes. anytime you yes. play like those old classic like Final Fantasy Tactics, yes. Over Battle, yes, yes, um, all of that. All those video games yeah. were that. Like so they, Legend of Zelda, it's very Legend of Zelda kind of. Uh, yeah, you know, but they're, they're all tactics, right? It's yes, a tactic yes, games, yes. right? Yeah, yes. so like you have the archer and then the fighters yep. and everything like that. Yep. So that, that actually is really fun. We've also got here Tiny Epic Zombies, Tiny Epic Pirates, and Tiny Epic Quest. Um, Quest is more of a kind of storytelling one. Zombies, they're trying to defeat the horde. Um, and I believe with that one you can also play as the zombies. So oh. that you can play as the zombies with them. And the meeples are great in this. Pirates, I mean, come on. You got a boat and you fill it with booty. It's the greatest thing ever. I mean, it, it's a great, great fun game. And also, again, um, you know, this is not a sit down and you're going to play it in five minutes five and be done minutes. with no, it. No, this, 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 this is a board game in this little tiny game. box. It, it, it really is. So it isn't like one of those games that yep. you pick up because you just want to, you know, you're waiting for a movie or something right. like that. This is... No, we're gonna play a board game That's right. tonight, That's right. and, but it comes in a really small box. So it's actually, this is the, I, yeah. I like these well. That's a good, good pick. Good right. pick. Good choice. There we yeah. go. Yeah. Let's talk about story cubes. So I've got a couple different options here. Story cubes. These are ones where, so uh, if you want to open these up and see, yeah. kind of see some of them. Uh, this is for the creative individual. If you can use these in uh, role playing games, you can use them to create stories. The core is that you're just trying to roll the dice and then try and create a compelling story about the the symbols that you see on them. They don't necessarily tie to anything specific in the game, like one symbol doesn't have a specific name. It's just used to, to create, um, you know, and generate ideas. So they're great for looking at, you know, the character background story things. This is the, the core one from Game Right. Um, I think Game Right does most of them. Um, and that's Rory's Story Cubes. There's several different versions. This one is a Star Wars one, so... If you're like me, you want to do some Star Wars creativity, this is uh, absolutely a set for you. So th these are great mm -hmm. for younger oh, kids, yeah. right? Like, because, I mean, the symbols, like, I got tree, turtle, and they have to tell, you tell a story yes. involving a tree and a turtle, and it looks like a cane yep. and feet. Yeah, th th this is actually really clever. I've actually right? never seen these before. Oh, and it's, and it's great because, again, what you're trying to do is it, it, um, it, it really 
kind of it doesn't force creativity, but it inspires it. Inspires you know? it, yeah. correct. And yeah. it's and it's exactly the kind of thing, like you said, for younger players or for older players to use in uh, role play. That's where I've used most of these in the past. So you roll, roll the games. dice for your story. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You roll if you have if you're trying to come up with an idea or if you're trying to come up with a backstory or something. You just you just want a jumping off point. And sometimes it's hard to come up with a good jumping off point. These story cubes are a great place to start. It is. Yeah. All right. Excellent. We've talked about this, I think, in passing, but I don't know that we've ever we've ever had it on this the show. Game. <laughs> Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. It's uh, it's a slap fest game. Um, it's very fast playing. It's very fun. It's very uh, you know active and, and loud. Um, yes. Super super fun game. We played it at I Origins. Played it, you played at Origins. Well, I wasn't around, but I knew you were playing or <laughs> playing at Origins because I could hear it from across the hall. Yeah, that yeah, makes sense. It's yeah, you have to like the people you're playing with <laughs> because, like, you, I mean, you're smacking each other on the hands, yeah. and it's you you throw down a card and you have to say in order you have to say taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza, and when it matches, or it's either when it matches or when it, it's yeah, it's when it matches, matches. That's when you have to slap, and the first one down gets the card. You go, th it's uh, or the first one down that or that messes it up. If you if the last you say, one gets the card, yeah, right? Because yeah, you're right. trying to give the cards to. That's people. right. So if if you're if you put the wrong card down, or if you put a card because you don't, you know, you don't, yeah, you just throw them down because they're face down. But if you say, you know, taco, ta and you, or you say the wrong word at the wrong time, like if I'm supposed to say cat and I say goat instead, yeah. because the pictures, you you tend to say what's on them as well, so it's kind of a, uh, you, you might you might force yourself into a seizure. I think you know, there's all kinds. So of you're things. trying to get rid of your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and if you hand. don't, if you make a mistake or you're the last hand, I believe you get the stack. Yes, that's right. right. And there's the some stack. rare ones on there too. Like there's uh, there, there's cards that you know are not. There's not the gorilla, exactly. right? Yes. Where you pound your, you got to pound your chest. Yes. And yeah, uh, yeah and stuff like that. Uh, Super fun game. So it is a fun, loud, obnoxious game. Totally obnoxious. That's just, just totally, totally obnoxious. Fun, obnoxious. Totally, obnoxious totally, game. absolutely obnoxious. <laughs> Um, let's talk about this one. This is a game called Chrononauts. Um, it is essentially, you're, you're playing time travel, right? You have a grid that has the timeline on it, and you get an objective to say, you know, you have to make this happen in time or straighten this out in time and correct it, and you move around from place to place, basically, on the grid, making things happen and changing positions of cards and such. Um, this is uh, the core game, the first one. This is my favorite edition of the game because it is Back to the Future. Back to the Future, naturally. <laughs> so all the stuff that happens in the Back to the Future movies, it goes on there in that box. This is more of a traditional history of the world kind of environment where it talks about, and um, you jump around. Again, it plays fairly quickly, you know, about 30 minutes. Um, you can play up to, I think it's four players, I think is what it is. Uh, and it's easy to pick yeah. up, um, you know, super fun. And again, looks like six. Small. Looks like you can do oh, six. Oh, six players. There six you go. players, yeah. Great. So you can get two more people in there, yeah. And this Have is another one that kind of looks like it could play in like five to ten minutes, but it's a little bit longer yeah. for the size of the box, right? Exactly. A big, a bigger game in the box. Exactly. Exactly. So let's see. Well, here, this is Spot. Of course. <laughs> I mean, so, there's so many different versions of Spotted. Spotted, yes. We have an epic struggle going on <laughs> at, at, at our brick and mortar store involving Spotted. <laughs> Which is the first. So, I don't know if you can see from the cards, but they have all different kinds of faces and sizes and different pictures. And you're trying to spot the similarity between a card and the one before it, basically, yes. right? So, you're just trying to, so you can win. Uh, very fast playing game. It's memory driven. It's also kind of recognition. And there's different ways to play the game oh, too. They oh, give yeah. you like there's poison. Wet. There's all kinds yes. of different ways to play the game. Yes, absolutely. Um, there's a, there's half a dozen versions of Spotted. Uh, this is just the one that I happen to have. Which is the and, one yeah, the, you know what's funny about this too is when you play it, sometimes the person will match. They'll be you know because you're looking for yeah. matches too. Yeah. And say here, Doctor Strange. They'd be like, Doctor Strange, you you have to go stop. Because you don't believe your card has a match on there. So you have right. to like look for like two minutes and then you're like, oh yeah, there is one. Like, every, no way. There's, there's no way. There's that no means... way. There's not one there. But they all do match yes. one of the symbols with another card. Yeah, that's right. Every um, card has a match. Every card has a match to it or yep. whatever. But this is this is a really fun, quick game. Every like, and it's all ages too. And it's all it's ages. Really and like and they make different versions of like Harry Potter yep. and this and there's a beach one. So yep. depending on, you know, what that person likes, their you yep. know, their their likes and stuff that you can spot it is definitely a, a fun one. And it's again, won't break the bank, fits in the stocking. Fits in the stocking, perfect. perfect. And everything yep. is contained just in this nice little tin. Yeah, exactly. Um, let's talk about here we go. Think and sink. Uh, <laughs> you're just trying to you you pick your, your partner. And what you do is you, you get a prompt or a card, and it could be anything like, 
Um, you know, you have to name a, a, an actress with black hair or name a princess or something. And you both yell out your answer at the same time. And the only way you score is if you both say the same thing. So it has a bunch of different prompts that may lead you to think a certain way. So you want to make sure you pick the person that thinks the most like you to be your partner. Oh. And that you can kind of like, you know, like, okay, we're going to play this. Uh, okay, who's your, you know, who's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite uh, miniatures game? Right, yeah. One, two, three. Age, Age of Sigmar. Sigmar. We just got a point. Nailed it. He knew I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, see? Uh, so you have to know what the other person But like, yeah, one says a sport yeah. with a halftime. Yeah, a sport right. with a halftime. Exactly. Yeah, a cooking show. Oh, yeah. like, yeah. All right, that's pretty so cool. Yeah. That's a, a good, you know, again, fun playing, fast playing, party game. Uh, there's nothing on it. It's just like, it's not a not safe for work game. So you can have, you know, younger people play it as well. There's that's, And a lot it. of these games, mm -hmm. too, can be played like, you know, on Christmas Day with your yeah. family and stuff. Exactly. Even like some of these are good good for who aren't even gamers, really, that's right? right? But they'll, exactly. you know, they'll, so you're playing aunts and uncles and stuff like that. That is yeah. a perfect party game that's, for that. Yeah, that's cool. Well, let's, let's talk about this one. This is a new discovery for me. You just. I gotta say, um, I just learned this game and uh, I fell in love with it. So uh, in this game, it is a uh, uh, it's a it's a variation on the bullcrap game, right? Uh -huh. So what you do is you have a hand of six cards, and there's a stack of cards, and you're trying to so you have to start. The cards are numbered one through ten, and they have different three different types of spices on them. There's pepper, there's wasabi, and there's red chili or chilies. So you pepper, wasabi, and chili. What you do is you play a card face down, and you call out the number. And the spice type, right? So I could, uh, you know, and with the start of the stack has to be one, two, or three. So I could take a card from my hand and say, okay, I'm going to play two chili. You then have to play a, a, the same a chili card, but it has to be a higher number. So you could put a three chili all the way up to a ten chili. Um, and then whenever you play a ten chili after that, you have to play a one, two, or three on top of it to keep going. I don't get to look at the cards you play. You don't look at the cards I play. But at any point, I can say, shenanigans, I'm calling you out, you know, I'm calling bullcrap. <laughs> and then you have to decide, you have to say whether that person is lying about the number or the spice. So, for example, if, you know, we were at, if I just laid a four chili and you said you had a five wasabi, you could sit down and say, I'm going to lay a five chili. And I can be, oh, you know, shenanigans, that's, that's not a five, that's a six chili or that's something... You flip it over and you show because if five I was right, that's you right. Would lose. I would lose the challenge. But if you said spice, it, yes, then I would win the challenge. And when you win the challenge, you take the stack of cards, and um, the the loser draws two cards and has to start again. You get um, trophy cards by if you if your last card in your hand, if you play it and nobody challenges it or they challenge it and they lose, then you get a trophy. There's three trophy cards. If one player gets two trophy cards, then the game's over. They automatically win. If you play through until you get to the end of the stack, which you, you throw a card in the middle, you can draw and um, you count the cards that you have, and each one is worth a point, and every trophy is worth an additional 10 points. So right. super fast playing game, super easy. I didn't do it justice other than to say, if you like trying to... Trick uh, a trick, Yeah, it's definitely a trick. A if trick you're tricky. Game, yeah. Yeah, it's great, yeah. and it was it was. Or if you like if you like bull, the game bull. Yeah, yeah exactly. This is, exactly. This is That's exactly good right. for it. Yeah. Unstable. <laughs> <laughs> Unstable unicorns. What can I say? You can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just it's adorable. It's hilarious, and you're trying to build a stable of unicorns. That's it. It's That's, super fun. Yeah, and it's got the fun cards on yeah. it and everything, and. Uh, yeah. Great yeah. stocking stuffer. It, it is a great stocking <laughs> stuffer. It really is. I mean, just the art alone on it, it's kind of worth it. That's, uh, that's awesome. That's all I wanted to show. Yep. That's You're like, that was get on stable unit. Yes. Uh, this is uh, something called Candy Chaser. I don't think we've talked about this before. No, I don't think we have But um, what you are in this game, so you're trying to impact the candy economy, right? So there is, uh, there's four different types of candy, and they're based on different colors. And on your turn, you get to, you're, you're in the schoolyard. And you're trying to drive up the cost of your particular kind of candy, right? <laughs> because because you got to sell in the candy black market on the on the schoolyard, right? Mm -hmm. So you can move on your turn. You move uh, one. You know you can move stuff up or down based on what you roll, and you can move a color up or down. And then once they get to a certain part on the board, then you have to vote, and you have to determine if your you know if your opponents are trying to bluff you. By, you know, maybe they're trying to generically drive up the color, you know, the, the value of purple candy. I'm sorry, there's five different candies. The purple candies, when actually, 
they're just adjusting the color of the green so that you think they're going after green. You get a color um, on your turn that's that's the one that's assigned to you. Um, it's it's a super fast playing game. Super, yeah, it looks like it's for young people oh, yeah. too. Yeah, um, you well, it says here's eight. the thing. It's yeah, it you absolutely can, but you're gonna need someone who understands the rules to kind of to kind of teach the nuance before they get. I don't think you could have a young person pick up this game and understand it right away. Okay, and that's the thing. I don't think they could just pick it up and and read the rules and understand it. I think you have to have someone who has some game experience um, to kind of pick it up. It is if you've played a game before, or at least you know of a certain you know at least in your teens, at least to be able to, to read and understand the rules. Okay, okay. Super fast playing, super fun, and I mean, who doesn't want to be you know a, a schoolyard scrapper that's trying to? Sell? And it's got a candy cane on it yeah, for Christmas. That's right. <laughs> This is uh, this is just a super simple game. It's super fun. It's called Toss Up, um, and it is a block of dice. It's your traditional pressure luck dice rolling game. So, like if you're familiar with like zombie dice or something like that, that's exactly what you do. You just you're just trying to roll and you set aside colors. You don't want green or uh, you don't want green or red or you don't want red. Green are the ones you want. You roll number of dice at a time. When you get greens, you set them aside. When you get yellow, you roll them again. You can stop rolling at any time. That's how many dice you get. If you get, I think it's three reds, then your turn is over and you've wiped out your you turn. So you can out. stop whenever you, whenever you want. So super plastic, sim simple pressure simple, luck game. Yeah. Super simple pressure luck game. If you have uh, you know, relatives in town and you want something that's fast playing and you want something you can press your luck or you can gamble on, that's a great game for that. <laughs> gamble. This is also... So I will be the first one to say, when we get together for Thanksgiving, my family loves to gamble. Uh, my cousins and I all go to Vegas uh, together every year. We haven't recently because of COVID, but uh, we go to, to Vegas every year because we love to gamble together. And when we get together for Thanksgiving and Christmas, we gamble. And this is the game that we gamble on, and it's super simple. So this is called... We gamble candy and stuff, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, sure. You know, it's, We don't all come with a stack of $1 bills to play with this. Yeah, I mean, no, of course, like you normally would. Candy um, and so chips. These, so what you do is you get three poker chips in front of you, and you roll on your turn, you roll the dice. And you do exactly what the dice say. It's called LCR. It stands for left, center, right. So... Let's let's just show this real quick because it's super simple. Because it plays so quick. Yeah. So here, you've got three. I've got three. Go ahead and roll those dice, Sean. All three? Yep. All right. So you would pass one to your right, which would be to the person sitting over there. Okay. They have one, to be that one? one of your, no, one of your chips. Chips. Oh. Yes. Pass one of your chips, and you do nothing with these. And then it'd be my turn. Now, I have to put... I have to give two to you, and I have to place one in the center. When you are the Latin, again, you can't just play with two players because... Yeah, it's, it's for a yep. more bunch of people, yeah. When you are the only player left with chips in front of you, you win all the chips in the pot. So what happens is you keep, slowly, you keep adding chips or dollars into the center, and what will happen... Candy canes. Uh, candy canes, that's right, candy canes. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, and, and eventually there will be a big pot of those in the center... And then, you know, one happy person is going to be the last person. They're going to roll a dot, and the person sitting to their left is going to roll an R and have to pass it back to them, and they're going to have a happy holiday with, all, of course, with all the candy, candy canes. Candy yes, that's exactly right. Yes. <laughs> so that's, uh, that game is it's a big hit in my family, um, and, uh, and we've been playing it for years. It's super simple, super fast playing. Um, and just easy holiday ones. Now, these are some games that we have talked about We have about talked before. about, but we wanted to re-mention them and then kind of yes. quickly run down them again. Because these are great stocking stuffers. This is yep. the game. This is the, the one where you start from 1 to 100. There's cards numbered 1 through 100, in, the, or I'm sorry, numbered uh, 2 through 99 in the deck. You've got four stacks, one that is one ascending, one ascending, 100 descending, and 100 descending. You're trying to go up and down, placing and eliminate all the cards. Oh. Now you love shot. And time. I love shot and time. It is essentially three card poker on nine different fronts. Mm -hmm. and that's what it is. It's super fun. Ascension. Now Ascension has a couple this, expansions, right? This well, this is one of the most recent expansions, and I like it because it is a full game. In a small box, many oh, of the okay. larger box versions of Ascension we've talked about, you know, it's the same rules, the same game, except they come with these, you know, it's a much larger box. box. Yeah, this just packs easily, goes in, and it's the exact same game, the same experience. Where it's a deck building game, you're trying to to go after and collect the best deck and earn honor points. See, this is good too because like it's a stocking stuff for right because there's a price and everything like mm -hmm. that, and then once. 
if if the person you get it for loves it, there are actual like big boxes many. expansions, many of them many. for ascension. So it might be like a yeah. a footstone. That's uh, right. You know, get your foot in the door for a, exactly right a, a, a game. Sushi go. I mean, it's just that the, you're trying to play different, you know, collections. It's a you you pass and take a card. It's all um, got the cute sushi yeah, art and everything. Yep, yeah, we talked about this. This is drafting, and you're trying to make a meal and get the most points. And this plays for like 15 minutes. It's good for eight and up. Yes. Yeah, yep. it's a great game as well. And then we've actually played this. <laughs> Dungeon. Now this is the larger box, and because I so that's what's nice about this is the larger box. You can put the smaller expansions, of which I think there's two. There's two, right? This base in, game and yes. then yeah. And those are small, like regular, regular game. card deck yeah, sizes. Yeah, I have the base game here. We can show that and, off as well. Oh, good for the size. That's perfect. So that's the size of the rate. That's clearly the stocking stuffer size. This is the third expansion, and you can put the 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 base game and the first expansion in here with it. So yes, yeah, so this is the base um, game yep. for the stocking stuffer. If you're looking for Dungeon Man, this has the heroes, and then you yep. add monsters to it. Exactly, this. and you um, just. You, your deck is your character, and you're playing against the. You're, you're playing it, it's against the really easy to pick up. Oh, yeah. Like the game really is. <laughs> My favorite part is when we first started playing that uh, Tyler. He was like, "Oh no, it plays like magic." You know, I'm like, <laughs> "It does not." There's <laughs> lightning bolts and hammer. Don't listen to it. <laughs> it was like, it's a very quick, fun card game. Yeah, <laughs> that uh, does not play like Magic: The Gathering. You don't. You don't build your deck. No, it comes yeah, pre-built. It's you built. don't have to. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I. I it's a card game. It plays it's like a, magic like that because you have cards. It's a card game, game, yeah. It's yeah. not collectible, though. No, not collectible. This, um, yeah, It's really cool because Dungeons Dragons, too. Yes. It's, got, it's yes. got great art on it. Yes. And it's fun art. It's fun Dungeons Dragons, like, you know. And the uh, characters made. Like, um, the owlbears, Hoots Magoots. Who, yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's great. It's got that, uh, what is the name of that Steve Jackson game? Munchkin. Munchkin. Kind of like Munchkin art a little bit to it. Um, yep. Yeah, and then so I have one for the Sean one that I love and was introduced by Barlow. Oh, Trash Pandas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a perfect stocking stuffer. It, it's great. It it's is a perfect fun. stocking stuffer. It is so fun. It right. plays quick. It has pressure, luck elements. Mm -hmm. You, It's with the, you kind of hose, you can hose your neighbor a yeah. little bit in it. Oh, yeah. And stuff. It's just a, a really fun, clever game yes. um, with great art and and just cute, right? The like card just, names are so adorable. Yeah. I mean, I love the, 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 what is it? Oh, fish. That's the one. Fish. Fish. Right and, pie and stuff <laughs> like that. I love it. But yeah. Good call. That's a good that's one. A, that's the one I wanted just for the Sean good one. Call. Um, but yeah, so these were just some of the recommendations just for, you know, it's getting to that season, you know, Christmas time, and uh, we figured, you know, we'd. Do some like quick little stocking stuffers. These are great for any gamer that you have in your life, um, and you want to get them something to stock the stuffing. Uh, stock the uh, stuff. Stuff the stocking. Stuff the stocking. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be stocking up on stuffing here in just a few well. days. This is going to be because we're doing this in November, so that people have plenty of time. To plenty of time before, to yeah, get it. Yeah. Thanksgiving. So stuffing is going to um, be happening. Yeah, thank y'all for stopping by. We really do appreciate it. And uh, y'all have a wonderful holiday now because we're coming up on yeah. Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving yeah. and, and Christmas season. Y'all have a wonderful now. We'll see you around. Happy holidays.